in this, the first half of the most civilized century, there was a time of war, death, and devastation. 1938 to 1945 were the years of horror, and for no people of the earth were these years more filled with nightmare than the Jewish people. Six million of them were exterminated in concentration camps and death chambers. Six million dead. And for countless more, the loss of everything which makes life worth living. Only when the liberating armies marched to the electrically charged barbed wire was the impact of so much horror presented to the world. For then the world could see on film what the Germans had done to the Jews. starvation and torture lost their meaning, and language lost the power to communicate the enormity of evil. Then the long, slow pull back to life and human dignity. First need, food food life restoring, and food which often killed because men, women, and children had lost the strength to digest it. In many cases, rescue came too late. Tens of thousands died because starvation and maltreatment had gone too far. Then the shame of a nation was written throughout the land for future generations of Germans to remember. The mass Jewish cemeteries the nameless dead of Belsen, Dachau, Buchenwald, and Oranienburg. Unknown non-soldiers. In Hebrew, here lies the body of a saint. Those who survived were called DPs, liberated but not freed. Home for these homeless was the DP camp. Gone were the guards, and the electrically charged barbed wire. But at best, the DP camps were dirty, overcrowded, dreary places in which to live. And living consisted of eating, sleeping, and waiting. Where did they belong? What were they to do? Where was freedom for them? Sieberstrasse in Munich, headquarters for the Central Committee of Liberated Jews and for the American Joint Distribution Committee. To each individual DP, they brought clothes, medical supplies, needed help for the moment, but also needed was help for the future, a purpose, a direction to bring the waiting liberated to the dignity of freedom. In August 1945, the first step to rebuild the broken lives was taken by Ort. Ort was founded to help oppressed Jews in Tsarist Russia in 1880, and its activities spread throughout the world after the First World War. Today, the letters stand for Organization for Rehabilitation through Training. The circle of irony makes a full turn, and here in Landsberg, near the fortress where Hitler wrote Mein Kampf, the first Ort workshop was started. Rapidly, the Ort idea spread. Regeneration through productive labor. Rebuilding the morale and spirit of the Jewish people. Training them for a new life, wherever they might go. The idea is simple truth. Give a man or a woman or a child a job to do, and you've given him more than just a job. You've given him a purpose in life, a reason for going on. You've hinged him to the future. After the first school at Landsberg, contact was made with World Ort Union, and other schools were set up in quick succession. First in the US zone of Germany, then the British, then Austria. By 1948, the student body had grown so tremendously that it equaled the total number of graduates of the previous three years. At first, the schools were started with whatever limited resources were on hand. Then, as the Ort idea spread, to the central warehouse at Schleisheim came supplies from the United States, Canada, South Africa, Australia, Sweden, 
from every part of the world where the imagination of men was caught by the struggle of a devastated people who asked no charity, but only a chance to rise, Phoenix-like, through their own efforts from Europe's ashes. Two symbols, the past and the present, a memorial to the victims, a school for the survivors. If you come to Ort to learn a trade, first you meet the school director and the vocational experts. They help you decide what course to pick. It depends a great deal on you, what you want, what you are best fitted to do. The curriculum is imposing. You can choose among a hundred different occupations. Once your choice is made, you get down to work, under strict discipline, on a timetable. When they call the roll, you're there, and glad of it. The Jews of Europe learn new skills, keeping pace with the modern world. They learn machinery, machinists, lathe operators, drilling machines, milling machines, grinders and shapers. What you did before Hitler, before the war, doesn't matter. A factory owner without a factory has got to learn his new trade, just as the boy who grew up in slavery has got to learn his. At the art schools, you can learn to do almost anything, from complex industrial skills to the ancient art of glass blowing. pride in art and the art idea is often reflected in your work. In the concentration camps, where they branded you like cattle, a number for a name, you didn't think much about clothes. But now you know you're coming to life again. You know because you begin to think about your appearance about a pretty dress. Or a silly hat. There's always a need for a trained nurse, especially in Israel today. In nursing, as at all art schools, you get two kinds of training. The dry bones of theory and the thrill of practice of doing the job yourself. Wherever you go the world over, you know people will be going to dentists. There'll always be a job for a good dental technician. And wherever you go, you figure people will always want to sit down or lie down. A fair assumption. So you choose this course. In an art school, you never know who you'll find working next to you. Gray-haired pupils alongside of the very young. Unlike the usual students at most schools, the art student carries special scars of a bitter past. Not yet an adjusted human being. Not yet wanted by the world. He may be the supporter of his family, yet a student still. Ex-child slave in a Nazi coal mine. Ex-concentration camp victim. Fathers and sons, mothers and daughters. You never know who will be sitting next to you at an art class. New keyboards for old typewriters with Hebrew letters. And you have to make them type backwards from right to left.
over half of these ORT students will go to Palestine. The government of Israel has informed ORT of what special skills are most needed. You are glad to fill the need. In Palestine, you know your knowledge will be a great economic asset to the new state. From grinding lenses for eyeglasses, to learning how to operate a movie projection machine. All these occupations are useful. spent six years in a concentration camp without a piece of soap or a toothbrush. As the population grows in Israel, there'll be new housing needed. And there'll be willing, skilled masons to tackle the job. Agricultural courses are vital. You learn everything you need to know from which side to milk a cow, to how to harvest a bumper crop. Your class is going to Israel in just a few days. Before you leave, you go over what you've learned. When you get there, you want to be a good farmer because being a good farmer is important to you and to Israel. In the Bavarian Alps, there are some not yet physically able to take regular ORT courses. Ex-tuberculosis patients, cases of arrested TB. For them, ORT, working with IRO, has established training under medical supervision. They learn what they can, and they build their strength to become useful members of society again. The work of ORT education is never done. Even the teachers have to attend schools, have to keep up with the latest developments in their fields, Standards of ORT are kept high. At the end of a course, if a student passes his examinations, he receives this diploma, his passport to freedom, recognized by consular and immigration officials the world over as a certificate of competence. A long way from Buchenwald, Belsen, and Dachau, human lives restored to productivity and dignity by their own efforts. The record of accomplishment is remarkable. Since 1945, almost 100,000 men, women, and children have been trained by ORT. 75,000 of them have gone to Israel, where a new ORT program is also underway. But there is much more to be done in Europe. In 1949 and in 1950, and for the years to come, more of Europe's homeless and dispossessed will be turning to ORT. And beyond Europe, ORT must go to the Jewish camps in the Muslim countries of North Africa, where the need is terribly urgent. ORT is becoming what might be called a Jewish non-sectarian organization. In Italy, by arrangement with IRO, the International Relief Organization, ORT will train Italian non-Jews. In France, at ORT's famous Montreuil School in Paris, 25% of the students are not Jewish. So the ORT idea grows, spreads further still. And now ORT will train DPs of all nationalities and religious denominations. You can help, whoever you are, wherever you may be, and build a better future for all of us.